right, here we are. We have finally made it to the finish line. This is the point of all of the work we've been doing, all of the right angle triangles that we've been calculating. Here we are, we have finally arrived. This is a very real scenario. This is exactly how industry operates, okay? Industry runs on motors. I've made that comment before. There are tons and tons of inductive loads within any industry. Motors run everything. Conveyor belts, uh, fans, blowers, motors, compressors, all of that. And so what happens, you of course there, there is resistance in the circuit, there's, there's work being done as a result of that and so on and so forth, but then you have all of your coils, all of your motors um, in the circuit which, which are driving your plant. Okay, what what is done, and I've already mentioned this in previous videos, what is done is, is there's a recognition that that's very inefficient. So let's start looking at the current triangle here for a second. So I've already drawn my voltages. Here's our current triangle. We know that the current through the resistor is going to be in phase. It's going to be right there. So that's, that's the current through the resistor. Okay. So I've, I've bypassed a little bit of this conversation already. Maybe I should back up. Okay, parallel circuit means voltage is constant, which is why I've drawn my three voltage vectors. Okay, we have to draw a, a triangle here about current because the current will be different through each, uh, through each branch of our parallel circuit. And then I've, I've mentioned Eli the Iceman, so let's get to this conversation. So all of those motors in industry that are, that are doing all of whatever jobs are required within the industry create inductive loads. Okay, and so there's an awful lot of current. The current lags the voltage. So if the voltage is at zero degrees, the current's going to lag behind. It's going to be at 270 degrees. So I'll draw it down here. There is all of the current, I through L, all of the current through all of the motors throughout the entire plant. Okay, and then if that was all we did, then hydro would be sending a bill IT for that amount, whatever that might happen to be. So, so that, that's really inefficient. That feels like a bad scenario, okay? Because we're paying way too much money for hydro, okay? And so what is done is, is we buy a bunch of capacitors and we set them in the corner and let them collect dust and we hook them up to the electrical circuit and that's all they do. They just sit in the corner and collect dust. They don't actually do anything in the plant. What they do is they, they provide what we call power factor correction, okay? So there is current circulating through those capacitors, IC, okay? There's current circulating through those capacitors, uh, which is leading, sorry, I better close this in. That's a current vector which is leading the voltage, okay, which is out of phase by the current through the inductor by 180 degrees. Canceling out those two to whatever extent they cancel out and the result is an IT that is somewhere in that neighborhood, okay, and thereby reducing the amount of total current required, okay. If I change my drawing a little bit, and that doesn't change the circuit, that just gives us a little bit different uh, opportunity to talk about what's happening. If we talk about current flowing through there and current flowing through there, then this IC and IL out of phase by 180 degrees means that we have current flowing around that loop. Okay, that's what's happening and so these two cancel each other out to a particular extent and this is not IT, okay, that's our new hypotenuse because once these two currents, which are out of phase by 180 degrees, cancel each other out, we're left with a particular current through the circuit and I can draw that current there and remember we call this I x not really a meaningful number anywhere okay but it allows us to to calculate the opposite of a right angle triangle so we can find our angle and carry on 
um, understanding our circuit. Okay, so <clears throat> quite, I mean, now it's all automated. It, it used to be that it was all done manually that the electrician, the maintenance guy, he'd come to work in the morning and the first thing he'd do is he would take a look at the power factor meter. So there's actually a meter as part of the electrical equipment measuring this angle and reporting the power factor. Okay, and as um, parts of the plant come online or go offline and we add or remove uh, inductive loads, we will need to add or remove capacitive loads as well to match. Okay, we already talked about um, resonance in a series circuit. We'll talk about resonance in a parallel circuit as well, but we certainly don't want IC and IL to cancel out perfectly. Okay, we're aiming for, typically, we aim for a power factor of about 0.7 to about 0.8. Eight. And of course, that is a lagging power factor. We still want to have a, a, an inductive circuit. We, we don't want to have so much capacitance that we have a capacitive circuit because we would have to get through resonance to get there. Okay, so that's certainly not something that we want to have happen. We, uh, we're still aiming for a lagging power factor in around the neighborhood of about 0.7 or 0.8. Okay, so that's that's a whole lot of, of lead up to it. Okay, but that's kind of the point. That's why we've been going through this entire process. Okay, so same is true as the previous video. We can come back and we can fill in our penis triangle, but we'd very much rather not. So we'll move forward. There is uh, true power here at zero degrees. There is reactive power here at 90 degrees. There is reactive power here at 270 degrees, which is which? The 270 degrees, that is the current lagging the voltage, current lagging the voltage, current lagging the voltage in the inductive portion of the circuit. So this is the reactive power subscript L, okay, inductive, and here is the current leading the voltage in the capacitive portion of the circuit, so this reactive power is RPC, and then once to cancel them out, we have a particular vector there, which is our opposite, and that gives us the angle for our hypotenuse, which is the apparent power, okay? So that's it. That's the lesson. I'll come back in a different video. We'll put some numbers to this and we'll crunch the numbers. And then one final lesson to conclude that we do need to talk about what happens in a parallel circuit when we have a resonant circuit. So when power factor equals one, what's the result? So I'll talk about that as well. And that'll conclude things.